All right, guys, we're out here in front of Johnson's Do-It-Yourself Garage. We're going to get Goose pulled in up on the rack and get this lift kit on. I got my buddy, Irving Carnala, driving. It's probably pronounced Carnalia. He'll correct me later. Always remember, safety first. We got iPro boots, gloves, mechanics gloves, rubber gloves. We're gonna take it right up on the rack. Tim Johnson just gave us the walkthrough of his shop. We're renting the, the bay and the lift for a couple of hours. You see we got all of our tools lined up over here and all of this is included in the rental. This is Tim Johnson over on, uh, I'll put the address in the description below, but all of the tools to do the automotive work lined up around here. And this is a pretty cool deal guys. I, I'll put all of the prices and everything and a link to his Facebook page in the description. It says bottle water a dollar each. He told us it was free, no charge. So and there's Tim right there. We're gonna get this bad boy up on the lift and get to work. gave it a little shake we're looking good and that sound you hear clicking in is the the safeties so as it catches each one those are if it those are the safety catches on the lid and you'll get it just past one and then lower it back to that safety did you lower it back down to the safety no, I just to check it. okay so we're doing one more quick check Make sure our lift points are solid, good contact. And then like I said, he's gonna drop it back down to that last safety. All right guys, so we're gonna use um, 21 millimeter deep well socket on a pneumatic impact wrench to take off the front tires. That is a, that's, yeah. How many can I hold in one hand? Nice! I already, I always knew you could hold a lot of nuts in your hand. <laughs> Let's see how strong he is. Oh, ho, ho, look at that skill. So the next step is we're going to have to remove this tie rod end on the steering linkage. There's a, there's a cotter pin right here that we're going to have to remove and then using a 19 millimeter socket we're going to take that bolt off. You have to bump that right here with a hammer and to get that to drop out to help make room for the installation when we actually take off the strut. So we just got a needle nose pliers here and we're gonna, you just get the end of that cotter pin that's draped over it, pull that over. And then once you straighten that cotter pin out, it'll pull right out. Yeah, like you see, it, these older vehicles, there's rust on them, there's road grease, dirt, grime. Dead you animals. just gotta keep working, dead animals, <laughs> hair, teeth. <laughs> you just gotta keep working it until it comes out. 
I am. Came right out. Boom. Cotter pin removed. Want to zoom in on the cotter pin? One, one that, easy right? step. Bam. So Tim just brought us a card over here so we could actually have something to place our tools in and work. Is that magnetic? That's magnetic, man. Nice. They don't play around. So we got that same pneumatic impact drill. We got a 19 millimeter deep well socket. Ah. I'm gonna hit that bad boy and it's gonna come right off. We, we, <laughs> we talked about, we read in the instructions that uh, an alignment's gonna be required afterwards, and there's a couple of reasons why. One reason is because we're affecting the right height of the vehicle by putting the spacers in and the entire kit in, right? The other reason why is because we're taking this bad boy out, that tie rod end, okay? We're gonna be knocking that out, that's gonna push, uh, push things out of alignment, so we're gonna need to get it realigned after we're done. At Firestone Complete Auto Care. Bing. So we got the brass mallet, we're just gonna give it a few taps. Just wanna work in this a little bit. And just like with the cotter pin, you give that bad boy a few taps and it drops right out. Right out. Yeah, this is gonna be a little harder. Now why are we gonna need to realign this? <laughs> <laughs> So he's just hitting on that knuckle to loosen it up to make it drop right out. That's gonna drop right out. That thing is in there, man. Yeah, like we said, you just you just <laughs> hammer on that knuckle and it comes right out. So we had to bring out the big guns. Well, that's it's not that big of a gun, but. <laughs> We've got to get the punch for the pneumatic air hammer. Because this thing is on there, man. And we're going to hit that knuckle while putting downward pressure. And just like that, no problem. Slips right off. <laughs> just a couple of hits with the hammer. Slips right off. So looking at that, into that linkage that we were hitting to get out of there, it's just a ball and socket. So it's not abnormal for you to see movement from there, right? It's still good. Matter of fact, it's got a decent amount of movement on there, so I would say it's still, uh, it's still okay. <laughs> Yeah, so all you need is a pneumatic air hammer and a punch. <laughs> and wait, I mean a brass hammer, a couple of taps, that thing comes right out. So the next thing we're gonna do is using a 17 millimeter wrench, we're gonna remove this bolt, sorry, right here from the sway bar. And that will allow, this is the sway bar, that's gonna allow that to drop out of the way so that we can get to that strut and get it off. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. <laughs> so it, it, you should just be able to twist. I mean, just a little, just the slightest pressure, and that they. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That thing's gonna come right off. So we just had to get some channel locks in there to hold that back in, so it wouldn't spin freely, so we could get that bolt off there. Do you guys still have it? No, you do. And the real skill here is me. Holding I'm filming. <laughs> holding the camera and holding a pair of channel locks. That's uh That deserves that deserves that some that right deserves there, a thumbs up right there. Yeah. Post it on your Instagram page. MySpace if you still got it. Oh yeah, we're gonna blow up on MySpace. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. Now that just swings right out like that. And we're, once we get the other side off, it'll move. So I'm not gonna film the whole other side, but I'm gonna do the other side expertly. After, you, you saw the rookie do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the pro perform okay. off camera. All right, three hours later, we're back at it. <laughs> So we've got to remove the uh, ABS bracket for the 12 millimeter socket so that the strut can be removed. 
And uh, the ABS bracket, point to it real quick. It's this guy this right, here. right here. So we just need to get that off to get enough clearance. And um, as you can see, it's coming off like butter. Oh yeah, just a just a couple of quick turns, <laughs> turns and we're good to go, man. Everything everything so far has just been like it's like working on a, a factory factory fresh oiled and lubed vehicle. That's right. Never been driven off the line. A child could do it. That's right. Matter of fact, the child is doing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm actually. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I'm actually Our wives are gonna comment. Actually, a child. Confirmed. <laughs> Hey, have you commented on how cool this place is yet? Because this place is pretty cool. Yeah, and the owner has helped us out with a couple of tips and tricks. I'm gonna put the, the address, phone number, Facebook page in the description below. Everybody in Clarksville, T Tennessee, or anybody in the surrounding area, Fort Campbell, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, you guys come on down and check Johnson's Do-It-Yourself Garage out. Tim Johnson will hook you up, man. There you go. All right, we got that off. Okay, so I'm gonna run back to the other side, do the other one real quick, and we'll keep going. So the next step is to remove, there are three nuts up here on the upper strut tower. And so we're gonna take this off. There's one in the back here that we're gonna have to get a self, we're gonna get a ratcheting socket for. Uh, um, a ratcheting, my words are escaping me. Anyways, um, these three nuts have to be removed, 14 millimeter wrench. And then we'll take it from there. And then just like butter, a couple of just, it just eases right out of there. <laughs> like butter. Like butter. So we had to get a breaker bar on there to get these loosened. And now, like butter. Like. I mean, it's a different kind of butter. It's not. It's not like the smooth butter you're used to. This is like this is like frozen, right? Rock hard granite <laughs> butter. Still delicious. <laughs> so we're gonna take two of the three out and leave one in so that it doesn't doesn't just drop out. So we're gonna get it low enough to the ground where we can get. And if you're working at home, which is like a normal jack and jack stands, those jack stands are what you're gonna use anyway. So we're gonna get it close enough where we can raise that jack stand and put it right under there to support that lower control arm when we take that uh, ball joint off of the upper control arm. All right, so step one of getting that nut off of that ball joint is our old friend, the cotter pin. <laughs> now these will slide out like butter. You just straighten out that one side of the cotter pin. And then you can't see it all. And I mean, it just straightens right out. Literally. Two second job. If your mechanic is charging you 15 minutes to pull out a cotter pin. Crazy, don't let yeah, him do that. Don't let him do that. This cotter pin should take two, three seconds max. Tops. Tops. And really, for these purposes, we're, we're you know making it go a little bit longer, just so that you just get a better make idea. sure you really understand how to get a cotter pin out. It doesn't actually take this long. Oh my god, my hands fell off. Now these cotter pins are so easy to take out. Literally, a child could have already had this thing out. <laughs> we just want to make sure you really understand what's going on here. Let me get that flashlight, would you? So this was actually a slightly different type of pin. I was giving him the instructions that were completely wrong. Completely wrong. And he was just letting me talk. I was just doing it. So it goes through there, and then it, instead of like a normal cotter pin going straight through, and then one of them turns around, this one goes through and then catches and hooks on the other side like that. So again, this is a 19 millimeter socket. And then this literally, I mean, it turns maybe like just a, a slight nudge. A little bump and then Yeah, just, just bump it a little. We are not gonna have to get the breaker bar. 
it, I mean, you just, just give it a little push and that bad boy will just... No breaker bar at all, just a little bit of love. No breaker bar. Can you grab the breaker bar? Yeah, let's get the breaker bar. So if you guys who don't know what a breaker bar is, it's literally just a metal bar. It's got a bunch of different names too. Beater just bar, you know? Beater bar, yep. Oh, I was, uh, I was tightening it. <laughs> I wasn't. You were not tightening it. <laughs> you just slide it over the end of the wrench and it gives you some extra leverage. We said like butter. Okay, I'll cut that part out. Like you won't even need a breaker bar. That thing will just, I mean, it comes off like butter. After we get this nut off, we're gonna hit that ball joint with the hammer and it's gonna slide right out. Fun no fact, problems. Fun fact about the ball joint, it actually came about by a gentleman by the name of Harry Ball Joint. He, um, <laughs> I just made it up. Completely <laughs> made it up. <laughs> So now we're just gonna tap the knuckle a little bit here and that thing's gonna slip right off. I think probably like... Right here. It's literally just, just a couple of taps. Like you just, you finesse it. It's it's not about strength. No, no, it's, it's about finesse. It's, you just finesse, you just finesse it right off of there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get uh, like a crowbar and I'm going to set it on this uh, coil spring right here. What's this called? Actually, probably set it on the frame. Okay, we'll do frame then... back there and then get some leverage up. As he taps that, I'm just going to put some leverage up right there. So we got the, uh, we got the upper control arm disconnected. Now, we have it supported by the jack stand so it doesn't drop any lower, but it can still swing out. So we're just going to bungee it up so that it doesn't swing out. And then the last thing we're gonna do is using a 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna take that bolt off of the shock at the bottom of the strut assembly. And then that last bolt that we put up there, uh, that we left up there to retain it, and we're gonna remove that whole strut assembly. Okay, so here we are with the 13 mil socket wrench. And like we've said all along, this thing, it, just a little bit of a nudge. It's more finesse, really. Well, it's a 19. Instructions say 19. The doctor is back and ready to operate. Was it a 20? We just need that one to stay still while we're turning it. Okay. Feeling. with just a little bit of finesse. It doesn't take a lot of strength to break these bolts loose. It's literally just a, just a light tug. And then just a, I mean, like we've been saying all along, a seven-year-old girl could get these <laughs> to twist. Woo! And it's done. <laughs> no, no, I, I, uh... I'm gonna time-lapse this. It's yeah. gonna look like it took no time at all. Oops, sorry, Don't worry, I'm not gonna embarrass you online. As you elbow me right in the nuts. <laughs> Finesse this a little bit and then come back. So this is a 19 on both sides. Um, the other socket was just too short, so it looked like it wasn't fitting on because of um, the bolt sticking out. But we're gonna hit it with the impact wrench like butter. <laughs> just gotta finesse it. That's it. Just a, just nudge it. Comes right off. Straighten up my uh, underwear drawer. You didn't see that, but we just knocked that out with the air hammer. You can just take a punch and a hammer and drive that through, and then just work it on out. There we go. Now we got one more bolt up top that we need with a 14 millimeter wrench. 
by the way, can you, can you pan to this real quick? Because this is probably hands down one of the greatest ideas for a tool cart. Right? Get a magnet dish, get a shopping cart, one of those small ones, take the baby out, obviously. Um, and, uh, I say it, if you got one big enough, leave the baby in there. That might be true. Leave tools. Leave that bad boy in there. And then you get the 14 mil is somewhere around here. Is that 14 mil? I think the 14 mil is on the other side. All right. Well, hey. Sure you losing this one? <laughs> All right, now we're just gonna pop that strut assembly right out without pulling the oh. And that's just gonna drop straight down. I forgot the the nut in the back. No, it didn't. <laughs> You're the nut in the back. Like we said, that's just gonna drop straight out. After we bash it with the hammer. I mean finesse it. It just finesse it just it. takes some finesse. It. Oh yeah, and then here, I'll stop this and then we'll show them. Okay, and yeah, like butter, that thing just, you don't have to tap it. It just slides right, <laughs> slides right out of there. And you see you got the sway arm in the way here that you got to work past. You got, that's why we need clearance down here. And then that thing just slips right out. Like butter? Three seconds. <laughs> like butter. Next step, guys, installing these brackets so basically what's going to happen is we're going to take this we're going to put it on the strut assembly tighten it down with the uh the nuts that we took off just now and then that replace these yeah i'm holding this one in my left hand so this one's going on the left side <laughs> have you given it a name yeah it's just lefty so what do we got here extension bracket yep and that should just slide right on there all right that's going to give you the the space that you want you need the uh the nuts drop that bad boy in there specifications for this particular thing it just says to torque fasteners but when reinstalling it does have to the tower into the strut tower 17 millimeter 47 foot pounds but it does not have a torque rating for the actual bracket here so we're gonna make sure it's very tight Now it's time to put it, the strut assembly in our strut tower. And it's just gonna slide in smooth as silk. You line up the, the new bolts with the strut extension, with the bolt holes in the strut tower. It's like uh, we're going, looks like we're going in behind the swing arm. I'm gonna try to lift this out of the way for you. It's like Jenga. smooth as silk, man. It just slides right on. And it seats right in there. So it took some doing huh? to get that guy leveraged in there, but we got him in. We got the, the bolts tied at the top of the strut tower. Uh, we got him seated down here. Now, using the original hardware, we're gonna put this through, but from the other side, I'm just putting, showing you there what it is. But we're gonna have to push down to get it to line up, to put some pressure on it, to get this to go through like that, but from the other side, and then put that bolt back on. So it wasn't that difficult. All we had to do was get like a, a pry bar like this. Yeah, slid in like butter. 
kind of jiggle that to get that guy back through there. Now we're going to tighten that down, like I said, to 100 foot-pounds, these to 47 foot-pounds, throw all of this other stuff back on, and we're done with the front. She's lifted three inches. All right, we got both of the strut assemblies back in. And the next thing to do is lift this lower control arm and reconnect this knuckle to this upper ball joint. And you're gonna, I think it's a 19 millimeter nut. We're gonna torque it to 40 foot, 40 foot pounds. And then we're just gonna work our way back. This guy's gonna go back on with the a correct torque. This guy's gonna go back on with the correct torque and then the brake line uh, bracket. All right, to get um, this knuckle back on the ball joint and the um, upper, I've, my words are gone. We've been at this for too long. What's this? Upper control arm. Upper control arm, right. So you have to compress this, lift it back up. If you're on the ground, you use a floor jack, put it under there, and then lift this piece back up so that this attaches to that. Well, you get it close enough, and then you get a pry bar and pry this down and then screw that nut on. But because we're lifted, we're gonna use jack stands. We're gonna rate, lower the pneumatic lift so that that raises up to where we get it in there. So literally three and a half minutes later, um, everything <laughs> is working out. We got all those things back on. We got everything torqued to specification. No, there was a lot of there was a lot of messing around with stuff and wiggling and lifting and lowering and finding ways to put pressure on stuff to get it to compress. Um, I hope you have a buddy that's good at this stuff and a shop where you can work. So front is done though. All right, two minutes later, after installing the front, the back wheels to come off. What did that front take? It's about 45 minutes to an hour, both sides. Approximately, yeah. Give or take a few, uh... Tire off, install. i say about 45 minutes. That's why we spent about five hours on the front, yeah, guys. Five hours. five hours. It's Tuesday now. Actually, right now, we're just starting on the back. We got here at 10. It's 3. Yeah. All right, guys, pro tip through a transmission jack up under the rear differential housing. Just so when we take the shocks off right here and there are two bolts, there's a bolt right here and then there's another one up top here and that bad boy slides right out. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. it was just spinning and then we got that loosened but it's not dropping out we're off down here but we can't get this to drop out so we're just gonna cut this bolt and pull it on down we have a shock cut out we and we really it we got it loosened and it still wouldn't drop through we had to cut that we got it loosened up here it still wouldn't drop through we had to cut that completely off um, 
I didn't have these these gentlemen helping me, there's there's no way I could have gotten through this. So now we're gonna we're gonna there are two more things to do. We've got to take off this um, sway bar link right here. I think that's a 17 millimeter, and then we got to remove this brake line clip, and then we'll be ready to install the new shock. All right, guys. So this uh, the shock on the rear passenger side of the vehicle. We actually had to cut that off with a torch. We got the other one off with a sawzall with a metal bit or uh, with a metal blade. This one we actually had to uh, cut off with a torch. There was no way those things were getting off. When you were wrenching on that thing, that it would just spin with it spin inside the shock. So <laughs> I am not recommending you do this unless you were in a full shop with all the tools that an auto mechanic would have. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lower this transmission jack, and let, let this back axle down about two more inches, now about another inch, so that we can get this coil, the factory coil spring off from in there. See that one right there, and right there. All right, we'll come back when it's done. We got the factory coil springs out down there. This is where they seated right here. This is the hole where we're gonna put the spacer in the back. This is the, it's actually a two inch leveler for the back. And we're just gonna put that right up in there, run the bolts and washers through, and then tighten it on the other side. And that slides in there like butter. guys we have our spacers in that was interesting getting those in there but then the coil reseats between that and its housing down here and we'll show you that in just a second all right go ahead there we go yep and now we got to make sure that seats properly up top all right Amen. I think we're good. We're seated at the bottom, seated at the top. Now let's see how hard the other one's going to be with that one in there. Oh, that's going to be fun. All right. Oh, go ahead. See it on the, on the seat though, so it should be yeah, yeah. You got more space to come in from that other side, though, I think, on this one. Okay. Okay. Right, look at the jack on the other side. On the side. Yeah. All right, let's do it. You heard the man. We're gonna position the transmission jack here. With this. We good? Yep. Okay, we got leverage on this side. Let me know when you're ready. You got it seated up top. There you go. Seated properly yeah. up top. I'm gonna to start letting this down. Okay. It's all. I think it's all you guys now. Yeah, I'll put it back in the middle. Yep. Put the transmission jack back in the middle. Yeah, there we jack go. it up right there. We still seated over here. Yeah. Just jack it up. Put tension up again. Do a little bit of your shock. There you go. Seated right. Yep. All You're right. good right there. Yeah. yeah. That's perfect, brother. Perfect. Bingo. Perfect. All right, you see the, the factory coil springs are back in there. You got the spacer up top there. It's actually a two inch leveling spacer for the three inch lift in the front. And now it's time to install the new shocks. And thank God I got new shocks because we cut those other things off. <laughs> so before we put the shocks back on, we're gonna Put the sway bar back on this side and then the uh, brake line bracket there and as you saw we dropped the rear axle pretty low i mean five or six inches it dipped down so that's why you have to take this stuff off to get that clearance to get those springs out and in so we'll we'll do that real quick and then come back for the shock installation all right so this comes bound like this and you're going to see when i cut this uh band that it's the shock is going to decompress. Okay, so after that shock decompresses, I want to 
gonna show you guys the order to put this stuff on. So you're gonna take this one off. This you can't mess up because there are two different sized holes here. If you try to do that, that's wrong. So the silver one has a bigger hole that's gonna sit at the bottom. This uh, rubber spacer with the little flange up is gonna go right there and slide down there. So now what you're gonna have to do is compress the shock like this and it, it takes some power. I'm putting about, I don't know, 150 pounds of pressure into it right now and I'm shaking. Um, and you're gonna put the bottom on first and then slide that, ride that up in there. So once you get it up, the other rubber piece, once you get it in the housing, the other rubber piece is gonna sit like that and those things are gonna meet in the middle and that's gonna be where the housing sits. Then this goes on top like that and then you take the washer that we just took off the top and then tighten that down. And then your shock is installed. Here's what we look like with the shocks fully installed. So you've got a little, you see, we gotta get this guy, make sure this is torqued on. But um, I don't think I've hit that with the torque yet. So actually I've already pushed this all the way to the bottom. So this little rubber spacer right here, well, it's not a spacer, it's actually a, a slide measure. So it starts off somewhere right here. And if you're wondering what to do with this in the picture, it slid all the way to the top. But that's not what it's for. You wanna slide that all the way to the bottom. That way you can check how rough you've been on your suspension. So it'll only go as far up as you've been compressed. So after you hit a few bumps, this won't be at the bottom anymore. Now, I, I, you can move it back. You know, you go off-roading, take it out, see how rough you are. You know, your, your suspension gets compressed on one side more than the other. These are gonna be a little different. You're rock crawling, not with rough country lift, but you know, you're out there doing your thing. This is gonna move up, and that's, let you, that's gonna let you know how, you know, how hard you've been hitting it. So we got that in there. It's time to get the tires back on and lower this thing back down. All right, so we are torquing the last lug nuts on the final tire, we are back on the ground. Once you hear that last click, to 72 foot pounds. 82. 82, yo, ooh, that was a good one. Once you hear that last click on 82 foot pounds, we're done. You're done. That's it. So if you remember what she looked like before, she's much prettier now. She's a little bit, she's about three inches taller than she was. She's looking good. She's all done. Backed out. Check, check the uh, clearance and spacing. Like I said, we you still got to get a, an alignment after doing this. So we'll be into the Firestone Complete Auto Care in the next couple of days to get an alignment on her. But she, she's sitting pretty three inches taller than she was before. Let me guys know what you think.